Good day, Deep and Word family. Welcome to day 62 of our Bible study review. Today's chapter studies is the book of Deuteronomy, chapters 25 through 27. Chapter 25 opens up with more various laws. Verses 1 through 3 pertains to two men who are in controversy with one another. It says that they are not to take matters in their own hands. They are to go before the judges and sort things out. And he who is guilty receives his punishment in front of the innocent. Then it mentions again that if two brothers dwell together and one of the brothers dies and leaves the wife of the brother who died childless, then that other brother is to take her for a wife and produce a seed for his brother so that his name may pass on. But if this brother refuses to take her as a wife and to produce a seed for his brother, then the consequences are as such. Then the elders confront him and if he still persists, this is what happens. Let's read verse 9. Then his brother's wife must come to him in the presence of the elders and remove his sandal from his foot and spit in his face and answer and say, So shall it be done to the man who will not build up his brother's house. His name will be called in Israel the house of him who has a sandal removed. Again, we've gone through this before. And there are tribesmen all across the world who still keep to this custom. They still practice this till this day. One of those tribes is the Igbo tribe. You should most definitely look that up. Then Moses tells the children of Israel about the command concerning weights, having honest weights, the scale. You know, when you look up for law and order, you see the image of the scale because this represents justice, having law and order balanced out. The command is for them not to have two different types of weights. They are to have one scale in their house and it is to measure all things by. And those who deal with things dishonestly, Yahuwah calls it an abomination before him. So yes, make sure whenever you're doing business in exchange with others that you are always walking in integrity. Because if you are dishonest with people's wages in business, if you are being deceitful in any way, the father calls it an abomination. Being truthful is love. Handling things dishonestly is deceitful. That is from the father of lies. And the father calls that an abomination. Just like he said in the previous review, he will not deal with anything unclean within the camp. He says, purge everything out of the camp that is not of me. That way he doesn't set his face against you. Chapter 26 opens up talking about the first fruit offerings of the land and the tithe. Now, initially the tithe had nothing to do with money. This is the command that when they walk into the land full of milk and honey, the land that is plush, they are to offer the first fruit of the land up to Yahuwah Elohim. They put it in a basket and they bring it before the Levitical priest. And then the priest brings the basket before the altar of Yahuwah. And then the priest tells the story, their entire story about Abraham, how he left Babylon, the full story about how he provided for them, the full story about how he took this one man, made him a promise, a covenant that he would bless his seed. It goes through the whole story, going to Egypt, coming out of Egypt, and now up into the point where they are now, he is about to bring them into the promise that he promised Abraham. The significance of going through this story is to honor Yahuwah Elohim. The very first command before the heavenly father tells them that they shall have no other gods. He tells them to recognize that I am your God who brought you out. This is exactly why the Levitical priests are commanded to do this right here. Before the heavenly father commands them saying you shall have no other gods before me, they must know who their God is first. This is actually a part of the first commandment. Know who he is. Know who you're giving an offering to. Know who brought you out and know who your provider is. Do you remember? Knowing in Hebrew means two becoming one. Be close, be intimate. Know without a shadow of a doubt who your covering is. That's what peace is. Peace is perfect trust and knowing who your God is. If he was faithful all the way back to Abraham, brought them into Egypt, brought them out, brought them into the wilderness, and finally brought them into the promise, they can trust him that when they bring the tithe of the land, that that is not the end of the road for them. There is more than enough. Let's read through verses 12 and 13. 
When you have finished tithing all the tithes of your income of the third year, which is the year of tithing, and have given it to the Levite, for the foreigner, for the orphan, and for the widow, that they might eat within your towns and be satisfied, then you shall say before Yahuwah Elohim, I have removed the sacred things out of my house, and also have given them to the Levite, and to the foreigner, to the orphan, and to the widow, according to all of your commandments, which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed your commandments, nor have I forgotten them. But do you see how the portion of the first fruit in the tithe, the father gives it back to the unfortunate? Do you see the father's love? So you're called to dedicate it to him, but he gives it right back to us. Do you see it? I honestly don't understand why people fight this biblical principle. This is to show him that you have perfect trust in him. And then he just keeps providing. At the end of chapter 26, we see that the people of Israel are being gathered again, like the wedding day. Let's read it and then let's talk about it. Verse 16. Yahuwah your Elohim has commanded you to do these statutes and judgments. You must therefore keep them and do them with all of your heart and with all of your soul. You have affirmed today that Yahuwah is your Elohim and vowed to walk in his ways and keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and listen to his voice. Verse 18. And Yahuwah has affirmed today that you are his special people, just as he has promised you, and you shall keep all of his commandments. He will exalt you above all of the nations which he has made, in praise and in name and in honor, that you may be a holy people. To Yahuwah your Elohim, just as he has spoken. So y'all get the picture. It's like the wedding day again, because the older generation died off. So now this new generation is about to enter into the promised land, which is a picture of the husband's house. So before they can walk into the house and consummate the vows, they have to speak the vows. They have to agree with the vows. So this is a picture of Israel putting on a wedding dress again. I mean, this is the book of Deuteronomy. It does mean second law, meaning Israel is receiving the covenant once again. So Israel has to consecrate herself. She has to hear the law. She has to agree. Now let's open up chapter 27 and let's see the next step in this ceremony, the wedding ceremony. Verse one, then Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people saying, keep all of the commandments, which I am commanding you today. Translation, keep your wedding covenant, keep the wedding vows. Verse two, on the day when you cross over the Jordan into the land, which Yahuwah your Elohim is giving you, you must set up for yourself great stones and cover them with plaster. Then you must write all the words of the law on them. Many still put this principle in practice today. They have a mezuzah over their house. This has the commandments written on them. Some people, when they build their house from ground up, they write scriptures all on the wood. They write scriptures on the foundation. The spirit realm can see these things. The word of God is powerful. The land of Canaan is of the father and he's given it to his wife as an inheritance. So his name must be written in his house. I hope y'all are seeing these things. She must never forget who brought her into the house and blessed her. The name of her husband must be present. The wedding vows must be present. She must always have that reminder before her eyes. Let's read verses four through five. Therefore, when you cross over the Jordan, you shall set up these stones, which I am commanding you today on Mount Ebal, and you shall cover them with plaster. There you must build an altar to Yahuwah your Elohim, an altar of stones. Again, y'all, altars are for sacrifice. So he's telling Israel, when you go into the land, when you cross over, you build these stones, you write the law, you write my name on there, and you build an altar for sacrifice. Do you see the wedding language happening again? The wife has the dress on. She's hearing the commandments. She's about to walk into the house. But before she walks into the house, she has to build an altar. This is a picture of the woman's body spilling over in blood, sealing them in the covenant. Before you can walk into the house and get comfortable, those vows have to be consummated. Verse 9, Moses and the Levitical priests spoke to all of Israel, saying, be silent and listen, O Israel. Today you have become the people of Yahuwah your Elohim. Therefore you must obey the voice of Yahuwah your Elohim and do his commandments and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. Get the picture, y'all. Then Moses tells six of the tribes to stand on one side of the mountain and six of the tribes to stand on the other. 
Six of the tribes are to witness the curses for transgressing the covenant. And six of the other tribesmen are there for the blessing. Do you see that this is a picture of a husband and a wife walking down the aisle and you have the witnesses of the families on the two sides? Chapter 27 ends with the curses being spoken in all of their ears. They understand what the penalty is if they walk away from the covenant. This is a picture of the ancient covenant ceremony again back in Genesis chapter 15. If you need to go back there to review, you should. So chapter 27 ends with the curses, but tomorrow we will see the other side, the blessing for keeping the covenant. Deep and poor family, that is all that I have for you today. Until tomorrow, Yah bless.